This is Steve from Boxing UK. Absolutely delighted to be joined by a legend. David here, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. All is well, sun shining, feeling good. I just got out of the gym, had a good workout, and I'm, feel, I'm feeling good. Good man. Straight into it, David. Been locked down. Most of us have done the garden, done a bit DIY, put too much weight on. You've only gone and set up a company. <laughs> how did that happen? I have, yeah. I have, yeah. It, it kicked off in probably January. The end of January, a buddy of mine from Vietnam um, contacted me and said, you know, are you getting prepared for this uh, COVID-19 thing? You know, they're on the border of China. It was really kicking off bad in Vietnam and they closed the borders. They really took it seriously over there. You know, 90% of them wear masks over there, you know, face washable face masks. So it was like, make sure you get yourself a face mask. So obviously he took his advice, looked into it. Couldn't get any vase. I wanted a black vase mask, a, a sleek, black, washable face mask. Couldn't get one. So I asked him to see if he could work something out over there to send some over to me from Vietnam. One thing, one thing led to another. The best mask they have in Vietnam is the mask that the police and government officials wear in Vietnam. So by hook or by crook, you know, between us, we managed to get to the factory that produces this mask. And... Um, they decided that they, they fortunately were boxing fans and they um, made me this amazing black VP195 mask that, you know, this one here. So now we're distributing it worldwide. Very there smart. Simple, basic, simple. You know, you see all these other people wearing these disposable masks that look like they're going into an operating theatre. And um, it's because nobody, in the, in the UK, we have no culture of face masks. We're in Asia, Southeast Asia. They had bird flu and SARS where they were hit real bad. And it's been had 20 years of wearing washable face masks. So after 20 years, this is what they've come up with. This type of mask, this fit, this shape, this material, using nano silver um, fiber technologies. So now I've fortunately been able to get, get some into the UK to distribute to people who want a nice clean black face mask that does and you'll watch both times so it's much better for the environment you're not going to see them strewn all over the floor like you see these disposable masks so it's good for the environment it's, it's comfortable and it's, it's very economical so you know it's you can wear it 30 times versus wearing it once and having to bin it or chuck it on the floor like people seem to do so it's cheaper it's better and it's just you know it's definitely something that the government now said everybody has to have you know i i, I embarked on this in the end of January, effectively. So, you know, I've been, been involved in seeing the changes and seeing how the government have kind of a little bit behind the rest of the world in certain instances, but I think we're catching up with uh, what needs to be done and, you know, people wearing masks is going to become sort of part and parcel with, you know, life moving forward. Yeah, I don't want to make a cheesy pun early in the interview, David, but Timon's always been one of your strengths. The, the yeah, it's been, been, it's been, it's been, Yeah. <laughs> And the, and the yeah, exactly. Compulsory Friday. I know, I know. It's uh, you know, time time has always been one of my big things. It it started to mess up as at the end of my boxing career. Well, time and just went out <laughs> just slightly, but it seemed in the business sense, it seemed to sort of it's going, it's going back to the heyday. Good man, um, David. You know, he said you, he was a big boxing fan. The guy, the manager of the factory. Yeah. What did you have to send him to make sure that you got these black masks in return? No, he. I think about it. If you're a, you're in Vietnam and you're you own a government factory, it's very. You're doing the same thing every day, you know. But so when you get contacted by a former heavyweight champion of the world, you're going to take note. Obviously, you know he's obviously just sending out these masks to the police, to the the protective services, and you know he's just doing his everyday thing. So obviously, David Hay then contacts you from from the UK, saying, "Love the product. Heard all about it. Is it possible for me to?" To, for you to make your product and send it to me to distribute um, worldwide. And it's like, it was, it was uh, I, other than kindness and, you know, um, getting a nice rapport, you know, I've got people on the ground out there. A good, very good friend of mine is based in Vietnam and he obviously did a lot of the logistic, logistical side of it from that side. So it, other than friendship, that, that's, that's all it's been, thank, thankfully. Oh, good man. So... You obviously found about this in January, David. It's taken until yeah. end of July. Couple of, why black? Yeah. 
Because I think I, I saw in an interview. I just that's all I wanted. I, I want I. Yeah, I wanted a black mask. That's what I wanted. You know, I wanted a black mask because it goes with everything you wear. I don't, I don't want it to be a lot more stealth-like. I want it to, you know, I wear a lot of black. Wear black. All my jeans are black. You know, I always wear black hoodies, and I just wanted something that matched my clothes that didn't stand out. It wasn't too bright. I thought, okay, just a black mask. Keep it nice and simple. I've got five sizes, all in black. Bang! If you need a black mask, black mask, the blackmaskcompany.com. Get your black mask. Simple as that, and I thought, okay, it's such a simple thing that I, I, it's you know, people seem to really like it. People, people want it, and um, you know, the, from the orders that people have uh, have made now, it's definitely something that you know is is needed. You know, more people need washable masks. You know, a lot of the disposable masks they're white or blue, and they look horrible, and they 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 rub your nose, give you a rash, you get sweaty underneath. But these are sweat absorbent. You know, it's just the, it's the next generation of, of, of a product that everybody has to have. Whether you believe in, I know so many of my friends, they don't believe in masks. They like, I don't believe in any of this. Yeah. But if they want to go into a shop, they have to wear one. So what one are they going to wear? Are they going to wear one that's terrible for the environment? Or are they going to wear one that's you know, biodegradable, that's comfortable, that's a lot cheaper than the disposable ones? It's like a no-brainer. So it's just giving people an option. And your mask, David, it's obviously much more than just to stick onto the shops. It's sweat absorbent. So can lads and lasses use it in the gym? Yeah. Yeah, people, I, I, use mine in the, I use mine in the gym. Um, and it's, it's comfortable. You forget that you're actually wearing it. And you can just crack on it, crack on as usual. Um, you know, a lot of people are very sort of paranoid about being around anybody. So particularly in a gym where everyone's breathing hard, everyone's sweating. You now, I just always you know, I wear mine. Kind of, you know, if, you, if you've got a personal trainer or something and he's helping you out, you don't want to be breathing all over him, particularly at a time like this. Hopefully, you know, give it a few months. Hopefully, once they figure out and everyone calms down with this thing, hopefully these masks at some stage will be a thing of the past. But at, at the moment, they've just kicked in. So whilst that is the case, you know, I think, you know, the least you could do is you know, put a mask to of your... If, you, if you've got such a, such a nice, comfortable one. Yeah, hopefully it'll be over, David. But yesterday, yeah. I think it was on the news, Boris Johnson was saying that the second lockdown in Europe's looking imminent. So these masks might be really, really needed longer than we think. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, I don't know all the legislation, what's happening out in Europe. You know, obviously, we've been focusing on the, on the UK. But, you know, there's, you know, it's... It doesn't seem like it's going away anytime soon. Um, the numbers, from what I can see, I just get the same information as everybody else. Yeah, you're looking at the paper, read on the news. Um, it seems to be calming down. But as you said, there seems to be some issues in Spain, and there's a, this is sort of flared up in in a few countries. So you know, we, you, just, you just have to be kind of as proactive as possible and try and do what you can to you know, protect yourself. And where can our followers get these masks from, David? Theblackmask.com. Simple as that. That's it. You want a black mask? Go to black mask. Theblackmaskcompany.com. And there you go. Simple. Brilliant. We'll, we'll use that clip for the Twitter page, David. <laughs> oh, man. Can I ask you five minutes of your time? A couple of boxing issues? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, can't, go for can't it. Can't have you on. Um, Link to COVID. How damaging do you think COVID's been for the sport, David? Obviously, we've seen a little bit of boxing. Um, I, think, I think it's been... I think it's put... A lot of fighters back literally six months. However, they were progressing. It's, it's, it's reversed their career by six months. You know, some even more because although they've not been able to perform for six months, their body has degenerated six months because they haven't been able to do the sparring. They haven't had the regular fights. They haven't been in the gym. They haven't been focused on, you know, boxing. They've been focused on, you know, being, you know what's happening in this pandemic. So it's definitely put, put the sport back six months. But it's fantastic what, you know, Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn are doing, finding a way to make sure that us, uh, the young fighters, have a portal to fight. Although there's no crowd, nobody wants that. But they've got an opportunity to, uh, first off, stay sharp, keep, them, keep active, give them something to fight for, give them something to train for, you know, put some money in their pocket in one of the worst economical sort of downturns that I've ever known in my lifetime. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, 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 and one step was baby steps at the moment. The British Boxing Board of Control have done a fantastic job making sure that they've ticked all their legislative boxes to make sure that these fights 
can go ahead to the point where they're putting the fighters in quarantine and they're bringing them into the arena. They can't be in contact. They're doing testing on. They're doing everything that they have to do to allow these fights to go ahead safely. And, you know, it's, it's, it's cost so much money, additional money that wasn't usually done. So, you know, Ed, Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren have put their hands in their pockets effectively to really make sure that these fighters get their, get their fighters back on track. And, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, as a sport, we always find a way boxing. And I'm just fortunate that, you know, we, fact, we seem to have found a way. You know, you've got BT Sports doing a thing. You've got Sky Sports also making sure that, you know, although they're smaller shows, it's still, show, it's still boxing. It's still out there. The, you know, the, the boxing economy has started to move again. You know, you've got matchmakers, trainers, promoters. You know, you've got, you've got assistant coaches. You've got all of the fighters, all of the infrastructure surrounding them, from the guys who make their food to the guys who, who make the shorts for the fight. There's so many different elements that are connected to these events going on. It's so good to have it happening now. And I've done two shows on BT Sport. Both fantastic shows. A bit weird not having the crowd in the studio. But I was so happy that after the fight, all of the fighters were just proud to get back out there and, and, and apply the trade. Yeah, we saw you on, uh, was it Friday, Saturday night? Yeah. Um, obviously, the big fight was Joe Joyce. Yeah. Um, the general consensus with that one, David, seems to be he showed enough that it could wear Dubois down when they meet, but he also showed enough that he can take flush right hands. <laughs> <laughs> he, took, yeah, he took a few big right hands, and that's all good and well. We all know, we, we all know he has a great chin. And, you know, when I was working with Joe, it was, it was, I never wanted to rely on his punch um, resistance. You know, that is the final, that's the final stage of, of, of your, you know, you don't drive a car recklessly because you've got a seatbelt on and the seatbelt works. That's a crazy way to, to, yeah. to, to, you know, just because you have a good chin doesn't mean you should show it every time you fight. So, you know, I definitely feel him engaging his, his uh, defense, moving those head, moving that feet, out of range when the shots come. And I'm not just leaning back. You know, the things that he's been working on before, but obviously he's been, he's been out, you know, he's not been in Las Vegas working with Ishmael Salas, who is very, very much defensive-minded. He's probably one of the best defensive coaches I've worked with in terms of moving, sliding, you know, trying to really get your, get your, your head and your feet connected. You know, he's big into salsa dancing and merengue. You know, he brings all that dancing flavor into the sport, into, the, into training, which is really useful for a fighter like Joe, who, who, who's got a very traditional hands up, sort of march forward through the, using his punch resistance as his defense. You know, he'll take two of yours to land one of his. And that's good against that level of opponent that he was fighting. But against the real sharp shooting, power punching, knockout specialist like Dubois, it's a very risky toss a coin type of uh, uh, strategy. And I think it, it could work. He might be able to just take everything Dubois has to offer and he grinds them down. That is, that is a possibility. But yeah. it's also a possibility that you take 10 right hands on the chin from Dubois, whatever resistance you had gets punched out of you. So um, it's a very, very intriguing fight. I'm very, very much looking forward to seeing how Dubois looks. We saw, we saw Joe Joyce come in a stone plus over his ideal, in my opinion, his ideal fight. But I believe he should fight underneath 18 stone. I think that for him, with his attributes, with his skills, with his uh, movement when he uses it, it's easier to move when you're lighter, when you're not carrying any excess you know, body fat. You know, strip off all that body fat and let's just use what you really have, the lean muscle, explosive muscle. That's what he needs to engage and use uh, exclusively. You know, Dubois, I don't know what he's going to weigh. I don't know how sharp he's going to look. Is his head going to be moving? You know, what Dubois does, he, he counters... You know, you throw a shot at him, he slips it, boom, and it's all over. You know, is he going to be like that? Or is this break, this COVID break, has that knocked him off kilter? You know, we don't know. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he does in his, his fight. Because he's got a live opponent. You know, a guy who's a former Olympian, a guy who fought in the WSB. So he's fought at a very, very elite level as an amateur yeah. and sort of semi, semi-professional level as well. This isn't a tune-up fight. Like, um, like the German was the other night, you know, this is a real fight. You know, even if there was no COVID, this would genuinely be a very good fight between two up and coming potential future world title challengers, contenders, potential champions. So it's, it's you know, I think this fight's a little bit more, you know, edgy your seat stuff. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But I definitely feel 
it shows a lot about the handlers of Dubois to pick an opponent as dangerous as this. Yeah. You got me excited myself and now, David, again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very quickly, uh, two main ones. Obviously, two fights that everyone looking forward to. Um, we'll talk about you, six is all the last, but Mike Tyson, Roy Jones. Am I right? I think it's fantastic. Yeah. I love it. I, I, uh, Roy Jones, growing up, you know, in my teenage years, he was Superman. He was, you know, the guy that I looked for inspiration in. I used to watch his performances and just think, yeah, this, you know, that is, that's it. That's what I'm aiming. That is the pinnacle of what I could ever be. Yeah. Now, if I did everything right, if I never got injured, if I ate the right food, if I did every training session, every surprise session, I, to get to what he does and what he did, was it I, i've never seen anyone do it better than he did it in his prime and for him to be coming back how old is he now is he nearly 50 or uh 51 i think and i think Tyson's 51. 51. for him to come back at 51 i'm intrigued because you know every time i've seen him he's always looks in good shape i've seen him in the gym he's still he's still showing he's working with chris Eubank jr he looks like he's still there he's still got it it's still it's still roy jones you know and um I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, Mike Tyson's Mike Tyson. Yeah. You know, he, uh, he's been out of the game for a long time. It's been many, many years. So I was probably six or seven years old when he was heavyweight champion uh, of the world many, many moons ago. So, um, I, what, of the two of them, I believe Roy Jones has probably lived the cleaner lifestyle in terms of who is going to be able to perform at an elite level. You know, I definitely think Roy Jones has had competitive fights you know, not that long ago, although he didn't win uh, them, he was still able to go through them. You know, even though, like the, the Danny Green loss, the Enzo Macronelli loss, you know, these, these losses, uh, you know, everybody knows that wasn't the Roy Jones of old, but he was fighting young, hungry fighters at the time. He's fighting an hour 53, 54 year old Mike Tyson who's been out of the game for a long, long time. So I definitely, it's like watching Linford Christie versus Carl Lewis in a 100-meter sprint. I'd tune in for that. They're not going to be running under 10 seconds. No one's expecting to go under 10 seconds. But I'd like to see, as long as they're not running against someone who's in their early 20s, because it, 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 be, it wouldn't be competitive. Not because that. It's just because it's age. You know, we get to a certain age and you can no longer perform as you once did. But as long as it's an even match... I, I, I think it, I think it's an even match, you know. Yeah. In terms of weight, I think Mike Tyson has the weight advantage and the punch power advantage. Roy Jones has the skill advantage. The, he's a bit closer to his prime in terms of he's had the he's had the more competitive training camps and fought the most competitive fighters. You look, you know, if you look at Roy Jones's last few fights and Mike Tyson's last few fights. You know, Danny Williams a lost a knockout loss to Danny Williams, or kind of yeah lost and knockout, and then they're, they're retiring on his stall with Kevin McBride. Yeah. Those, though, 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 that's not the best, you know. Now we fast forward 15, 16, 17 years. Even if he goes back to that Mike Tyson of 16, 17 years, would that be good enough to beat Roy Jones? I don't know. I don't know. But it's intriguing. I'm going to be tuning in. And um, it's all about who, if Mike Tyson can land one of his devastating combinations I'm seeing hitting the bags with, you know, you can get it over early. But if you can't, if Roy Jones Jr.'s reflexes are 20% of once they once were, those shots that seem fast from Mike Tyson, I don't think you're going to be catching Roy Jones Jr. But all it takes is that one. That one left hook from Mike Tyson. Even a 54-year-old Mike Tyson can change everything. You know, I've seen him, you know, he's got that devastating one punch knockout finish. And you'll always, the last thing you lose is your punch. George Foreman showed at the age of 45 against you know, Michael Mora. All it takes is that one shot, that heart and that one shot, and you can do anything. And he's not fighting a young Michael Mora. He's fighting a, an old Roy Jones Jr. So it's, you know, it's a very, very intriguing fight. I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, as long as both fighters you know, finish this exhibition fight healthy, we're all entertained. They get a payday. It's, it's a win-win-win for me. Happy days. David, you're a fighting man. And I know you said that you wouldn't come back, but the saying it's an exhibition, will they be able to control themselves? Will the red mist not descend and one of no, them? No, listen, 
an exhibition fight is no different from an amateur fight, it's no different from a professional fight, it's no different from a bare knuckle fight, it's no different from a fight in the pub. Fighting is fighting. When you're a fighting man, when you've been fighting for all of your life, inside the ring and outside the ring, you don't know the difference between a real... Or the only difference is you've got a commission that signs that is the fight's the fight. The rules are the rules. And they're going to fight no harder or no less hard than if it was sanctioned. It's not sanctioned. It's not going to go on their records, but it's a fight. And they, you're going to see both fighters giving all they have. No fighter's going to give up halfway through because they got out of breath. No. This is, what, this, what, this is going to be just as intense as any real fight you'll see anytime soon. And um, I'm, I'm literally, I'm, I'm looking forward to this, this showdown. They say it's an exhibition. It's not. It's a real, they're going to go out there and they're going to try to seriously knock each other out. Both fighters, uh, the most vicious, dangerous fighters you've ever seen in your life. In their primes, they're, they've, they've both, they're, they're both genetically designed to do this game called boxing. And that's it. And they're both two of the best that have ever done it in the history of our sport. And to get them to both come and do it at the age of 50 plus, I think, I think it's a good thing. I'm looking forward to it. Good, man. Last one, I promise. Uh, the last, the last, last one. The last, last one, I promise, David. Um, obviously, you're Derek's manager. We've seen Alexander Usyk putting a couple of videos out lately. Um, I enjoyed Derek's pictorial response yesterday, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just where, where are we at at the moment? How's Derek? Derek's good. He's training. You know, we're, we're, we're focusing on mid-September. We're working on that as a date. Nothing's confirmed. Nothing's uh, rock solid. But in your mind, you have to have a date to work towards. If you don't have a date to work towards, you're not really focused 100%. So we put that in as the date in his mind that he's working towards all the training program, the periodization between strength training, speed training, sparring is all gearing up to mid-September that looks like it you know that'll be six seven weeks after the um Alexander Povetkin and uh, Dillian White fight that happens on the 22nd of August um in um, Eddie Hearn's backyard so that you need you normally need six seven weeks between pay-per-view events ideally so that's what we're kind of working towards at the moment um but, but hopefully we should know something um in the, in the next couple of weeks but Derek's training he's eating healthy he's looking after himself Alexander Usyk is, is exactly the same. He's, he's working hard. He's training. He's working towards a similar date. So th th that's the thing now. Boxers have to start working training with no real rock-solid date in mind. They have to be very professional. They've got to not have the signature signed before they start training. They have to invest in their own training program, getting in the sparring, getting the nutrition sorted, you know, getting the, your weight, your, your strength and conditioning guys, making sure you've got the equipment. You know, you, you've got to invest in yourself with no guarantee of a date get, to get the payback. But that's all about being a professional boxer. And um, that's, that's a lot of fighters are going to fall short because some fighters require 12 week signature. Then they've got 12 weeks. They know they're going to use this training. Get, no, you just got to start training as though you're going to be fighting potentially six, seven weeks down the line. And when, if you're lucky enough to get an opportunity, you're then not going to be one of those fighters. Go, oh, it's not enough time. Well, you just have to, you're a professional, you have to do it. And when you get an opportunity, if you want that opportunity, you need to be professional and keep yourself no more than seven, eight weeks away from fighting shape. And that means ticking over in the gym at least once a day, six days a week, working hard, working on your strength, maybe sparring once a week, hitting the pads three, four times a week, just to keep your eye in. You know, some fighters do it, some fighters just completely switch off. You know, I definitely prefer fighters who live the life, you know, whether they've got a fight date or not, you're a professional athlete. You need to keep your eye sharp, keep your, keep your, you know, keep, keep your skills fine tuned and um, keep consistently growing and getting bigger and better and stronger. Good man. And you're hoping that there might even be some fans in the arena. Yeah, I did. In, in October, we, we're looking at hopefully, because you've got the um, Dubois and Joyce, fingers crossed that fight happens. Um, so hopefully, that's, that's, that's scheduled to happen at the O2 Arena. So I assume they've booked the O2 Arena because it's got plenty of seats. Whether How many of those can be filled is unknown as yet. But it's a good sign that, you know, the promoters, that uh, Frank Warren has booked that venue. He might, he might know something 
You know, he may be working something out with the government in terms of what potential restrictions there are. They're working behind the scenes. You know, the big boys that are with boxing are, are working on trying to get the fans back in there to, you know, see these fights in the flesh. Good man. And if only there was some stylish black masks that they could wear inside the arena, David. Listen, listen, maybe, you know, the, the, I'll have a word. I'll see what I can do. I'll, I'll have a word so we can do. Good man. Rem remind us where they can get these masks, David. The blackmaskcompany.com. So you've got to do, go there, check them out. If you don't buy them, if you don't, don't. But if you're going to, if you, if you're not, you know, even if you're not going to buy my mask, buy a washable mask. Don't buy a disposable mask. 129 billion masks per month. Disposable masks are getting just put out into the atmosphere. There are more, there are more disposable masks in the ocean than there are jellyfish. Not a good situation. Leave the medical masks for people in hospitals. Don't be getting on the tube and throwing them on the floor. Get yourself a washable mask that you can put in a washing machine and then wear it multiple times. It's just a no-brainer. Good man. The blackmaskcompany.com. David here, it's been an absolute joy. My pleasure. I shall hopefully see you soon. Definitely, definitely, definitely. All right. If I'm you can recognize me through a mask. It's already on its way, David, I promise. All right, you take care. Love you. See you later, mate. Thanks, David. Bye.